this is the tomb for Maccabi Chulkin. And they called him the Birdman because of his jump kicking ability. So he was a famous Tamarite person. He had his own version of Wansu Kata that he created. Wansu? Okay. He was in the 1700s, 1800s. I forget exactly when he lived and when he died. Okay. Somewhere around in the early 1800s, if I remember correctly. And he is a Chinese person or the Chinese? No, he's Okinawan. He's Okinawan. He may be of Chinese descent, you know. Okay. Had some uh, heritage, some Chinese heritage. The history is very complex. Oh right? yeah, it's, it's a lot. Very yes. complex. And, okay. Yeah, but he's a famous person, also. Sensei Andy, you can say that the sensei here, the most famous sensei, is karate. And when karate was not there, so maybe they migrated from China. So their beauty was that they jump kick. और जो हम अक्सर कराटे के अंदर किक्स को महसूस करते हैं देखते हैं ये लोग जंप कर रहे हैं बैक किक कर रहे हैं उड़ के किक कर रहे हैं तो ये बटरफ्लाई मशहूर थे अपनी इस कराटे की दुनिया के अंदर तो और ये कुछ आइटिन हाउ इज होल दिस इज नॉट द ओरिजिनल ट्यून मेबी इट्स इट्स अ न्यूअर ट्यून बट आई डोंट नो आई ट्राई टू फाइंड दिस डेट्स फॉर द डेथ ओके इनके को ना डेट का पता चल सका अब तक ना हिस्ट्री में ये दोबारा देखना पड़ेगा कि इनकी क्या डेट ऑफ बर्थ है क्या कब के थे ये लेकिन ये बहुत पुरानी कवर से अंदाजा हो रहा है कि ये बहुत बहुत ही पुरानी कवर है आप देख सकते हैं और हम जहाँ आए हुए हैं ये जगह भी कुछ ख़तरनाक है क्योंकि बहुत पुरानी है और यहाँ पे स्नैक्स वगैरह यानी सांप वगैरह भी हैं सो हमें बहुत केयरफुल होकर यहाँ पर आना पड़ा है और आवाज़ें भी हम बहुत सुन चुके हैं रास्ते में फिर भी हम यहाँ पर ये वीडियो बनाने के लिए आ गए और इस वक्त भी जो है वो आसपास कुछ सांप मैंने बिल्कुल सामने चलते हुए देख लिए मगर वीडियो क्योंकि बनानी है और सर्च करनी है तो इसमें चीज़ें ये होती हैं तो आई थिंक होप कि आपने ये वीडियो देखी और आपको ये भी पसंद आई होगी एस पी एस पी के नाउ सो सर्च इज स्टिल It says, uh, there was a hospital owned by Taira Masa, which was situated in Shuri's Tonukura district before the war. This was the same site where the Makabe estate once stood. Makabe's residence covered an area of 360 subo, which is 1188 meters, and many kinds of budo training equipment were located there. Makabe Choken Okina is said to have trained there every day. Thanks to the Tyra family, I enjoyed the privilege of inspecting a footprint on the ceiling of the guest house put there, rumor maintains, by Makabe himself while demonstrating a jump kick. I went there with the interest of confirming it with my own eyes, using my eyes to compare the height of the ceiling in the old style residence to those of other Okinawan style homes. I would say that it was over four meters high. Makabe Choken was born the fourth son of Makabe Aji Chogi. Who was Chinese name was Jigen Ho. During the time of King Shoboku, Choken's childhood name was Umijiru, and his Chinese name was Kobundin. He grew quite large during his youth, and by the age of 15 or 16, he developed into an enormous man of muscle. Coming from a man, excuse me, coming from a family of wealth and position, Makabe received a good education, which during Okinawa's Ryukyu Kingdom was referred to as Esumi Makumi. Hey. Means hands, but implies martial arts. Sumi means calligraphy, but implies a scholarly pursuit, such as the study of Confucianism. And Gakumin means to study. Together, they represent the principles of Bunbu Yodo, the significance of balance and physical training of philosophical study. In addition, Makabe also became familiar with Japanese academic pursuits. In spite of Makabe's well-known reputation as a Uji who trained him in what tradition remains a subject of intense curiosity. Notwithstanding, it would seem that whoever was responsible for his education did a remarkable job. Makabe was respected as a talented man with a good physique and remarkable power. During Makabe's youth, there were other strong young men who challenged him. One young stalwart was a man named Funakoshi. Funakoshi had gained a reputation as being a brave, strong fellow after pinning a fighting bull to the ground by twisting its head and holding it down by the horns. The confrontation was held on the grounds of the Makabe residence. In preparation for the bout, several referees and a horde of excited young men had gathered in the courtyard to observe the exhibition. First, the contestants were required to demonstrate their strength by lifting a 90-kilogram 
old style stone used in power training, similar to today's barbells, the chikarasashi. First, Makabe, without much effort, did 20 quick presses over his head before putting the apparatus back down on the ground. The audience remained collected as they knew Makabe trained every day. However, when it came time for Funakoshi to attempt the lift, there was a pause. He was unfamiliar with the equipment and the condition was different from what he was used to and the audience sensed it too. Yet, in spite of the variations, Funakoshi attacked the Chikarasashi and rattled off the same amount of repetitions as did Makabe. The crowd was astonished by Funakoshi's power and immediately showed its enthusiasm. Next came the Chikara Bull, the game which tested the power, balance, and dexterity of its participants. It required each contestant to brace the end of the bull on a point just below the umbilicus, the tandem, and hold on to it with both hands, thrusting at each other while keeping the posture in a pliable but authoritative position. Victory depends entirely on a keen sense of positioning. Weight and strength are not enough to win. Just like Budo, knowing the principles of Tai Sabaki, or body movement, and Kyai Jutsu, the build-up, containment, and release of ki, had to be mastered in order to overcome any opponent. Still intact after about an hour or so, the Shijakata, which is the referees, ordered the contestants to change positions. Uh, once again, they vigorously went at each other, but to no avail. Finally, the Shijakata declared the bout a draw. It was just too close a game. All but burned out, Makabe and Funakoshi took a rest for a while before starting the next event to settle the contest. Agreeing to test their tobigeri, or jumping kicks, the next event finally got underway. The location was changed from the courtyard into the guest house of the Makabe residence. Committed from youth to a life of Budo, Makabe-chan had more than adequately trained his running and jumping skills. He believed that the essence of combative superiority existed in pliability, not in stationary postures, and Makabe found Mr. I'm sorry, Mount Hanpan and Mount Torazu ideal terrain for strengthening such skills. The Taira family maintained that whenever Makabe returned home late at night, like a ninja, he would jump over the stone gate, which surrounded the residence so as not to disturb the family. The Umote Yajo, the front gate, was the symbol of an Okinawan Kemochi road with a chronicle lineage, the equivalent of a Japanese samurai family, during the Ryukyu Kingdom period. However, the gate, like so many other treasures of Okinawa, was destroyed during the war. Generally speaking, a big man is usually strong but lacks mobility. However, Makabe-chan was the exception to the rule. Incidentally, the suffix chan is a term which refers to a small, quick, and brave fighting rooster. Hence, this nickname has led many to be erroneously believe that Makabe was a small person. In 1944, Makabe Chosho, a sixth-generation descendant of Makabe-chan, visited me at my request. The owner of a tea business in Naha's Higashimachi, he was kind enough to provide me with the family genealogy. His assistance was of enormous value to my research. However, my analysis, along with his family records, were unfortunately destroyed during an air raid on October 10, 1944. I am deeply sorry that I was unable to take better care of the Makabe family records. Helping to corroborate Makabe-chan's actual size, Chosho-san recounted a story which I would like to impart. There was a kimono made from Bashofu, far from the Basho tree. It was Makabe-chan's special keepsake from Amami, a principal island in the Ryukyu archipelago, and was well cared for and handed down in the family. Although Makabe Chosho was an average-sized man, the kimono was, however, too long for him, even when he stood up on the top of a thick chest board. Although a minor point, it does nonetheless tell us that Makabe-chan wasn't a small man, as some would have us believe, but was more than six feet tall. Makabe Chotoku, the vice president of the Ryukyu Fire Insurance Company, is a seventh generation descendant of Makabe Chan. When Chotoku was rebuilding the family gravesite after the war, he inspected Makabe's bones. He said that he was surprised to see that his leg bones were so long. I believe that the information which I received from Taira, Chosho, and Chotoku all seemed to indicate that Makabe Chan was indeed of more than just average size. To continue with the confrontation between Makabe and Funakoshi, there is an abstract poem which I believe characterizes their encounter, which I'm not going to read the Japanese, but the interpretation is, the movements of a real bushi are not unlike those of a bird in flight, swift, natural, and without thought. Regardless of one's physical strength, catching a bird is virtually impossible. Although Makabe was big and powerful, he was also unusually agile, no doubt the result of his intense training. Seemingly, Funakoshi clung to the idea that power was enough to overcome an opponent. He had successfully stalemated Makabe in the tests of power and believed that he was ready to challenge the technique of the great Bushi. 
Now came the opportunity for Makabe to test the results of his lengthy training in jumping techniques. He took his stance as he prepared to unleash his kick. Looking calmly up at the ceiling of the guest house, Makabe wasted no time springing into position before leaping up and with an enormous kiai, executing a jump kick as fast and higher than anyone in that room had seen before. Landing back on the tatami, uh, Makabe finished his kicking demonstration in the meikata posture. Uh, as the spectator stood in awe, the imprint of Makabe's foot remaining clearly visible on the ceiling served to remind everyone of the incredible feat they had just witnessed. When it came time for Funakoshi to perform, it remained obvious to Makabe that he was flustered. Having never even seen, let alone practiced, a jumping kick, Funakoshi scrambled to learn. Attempting to duplicate that which he had just observed, Funakoshi, in spite of Makabe's friendly advice, fell flat on the back of his head, unconscious. By the time the fallen Funakoshi finally came to, he realized that he had been outmatched and was often, and as was often the case in those days, asked Makabe to become his teacher. And I won't read the rest of it, but I mean, that's pretty much the end of that little story, but there's another little story in here, too. And it goes on for a few more pages, you know. But yeah, so he was a well-known martial artist okay. of his day. But we just don't necessarily know who his teacher was. But there's no date of birth and... No, not listed in here, I don't think. Let me see. Um, he may have recorded it in here. No, there's not. It's, it's, I think it's like the late 1700s, maybe okay, early 1800s. Okay. Yeah, so it's a long time ago. So.